new in Adobe Audition CS6 is great marker support. We've had markers, but we've updated them in a number of ways. Markers help us work with our files, because usually we have files all over the place, and we need to delineate where we're working on a file. So we've updated the markers completely. Let's go in and have a look. All right, so here's our markers panel, and I have a marker there set in this area. And I want to show you that we now have different types of markers. So a Q marker, which is what we're doing here. We now have subclips. Very important now, subclips that we create in Edition CS6 are supported in Premiere Pro CS6. So all the little files that we want to get out there, we can do that. CD tracks. So we now have expanded CD support in Audition CS6, so we can actually have one long file and set a bunch of markers as different songs and then burn that out to CD. And cart timer. So these are for the radio folks out there. This is something that they use all the time uh, for a marker. I'm just going to leave this as a Q marker right now. And I want to show you in the edit menu in preferences, down here, markers and metadata, some important settings in here for including markers in metadata um, as regular save and export. Uh, you can include the markers when performing a cut or copy. This one down here, uh, embed edit original link data in multi-track mix down. This is essentially the ability to export out a flattened file. So I've created a mix here and I'm giving this to the video editor and I'm giving them a 5.1 stereo or mono mix. If I embed the original project, then what happens is when you choose edit original, which is a common feature that we have in all Adobe applications. So I choose edit original from the stereo file, it launches the full multi-track session here in Audition CS6. It's a great way to have no compromises and full flexibility. So we also have a metadata panel. When I click on this, it's going to open my panel over here on the right-hand side. And you can see, typical of XMP, we've got a ton of different formats that we can edit and add to. XMP is extensible, so it's really useful when you're working with your files. OK, so I've made a selection in this particular file, and I want to show you something called skip selection. Skip selection is for those times when you're working on a file and you need to edit a piece out. I'm going to play this Six. and let you hear what's happening. When it comes to voice editing in particular, one of the really, really great things is the sk skip... One of the really, really great things is the skip select... So very common, you make a mistake while you're doing a voice over, and you continue on uh, at the other end. Now, usually what someone will do at this point is they'll try to find the area in here where the mistake occurs, delete that out, and then play that back. And what inevitably happens is you leave a syllable in from the previous thing that you want to take out, or you took too much out. So I've got a marker. When I double click on my marker, it makes the selection. And we have something new down in here, this little button that says Skip Selection. What's great about Skip Selection is it's going to play everything except what I've selected. But there's an added goodie inside here, a pre-roll and a post-roll. That means that when I hit play, it's going to sound like my final edit. Watch this. Select it, click play. Voice editing, in particular, one of the really, really great things is the skip selection feature. Did you get what happened there? Let me try that again. Push play. Notice that it starts at a pre-roll before my edit. If it didn't do this, then it would just jump over that area. This is just a good way for me to hear this selection. Voice editing, in particular, one of the really, really great things is the skip selection. Wonderful. So now what do I do? Just hit the delete key. It's gone. Let me play this now without playing the selection. In particular, one of the really, really great things is the skip selection. What a breeze. I mean, you can use that all day, every day when you're going in and editing that. And it's, it's helpful to have a marker selection inside there. OK, another big improvement and probably my favorite new improvement to working with markers is being able to see all the markers that are open. It's common now in Adobe Audition CS6 to be working with multiple sessions, multiple files. And what used to have happen was that when you had one file open, you only saw the markers associated with that file. Well, this is your happy button over here right now, and it's the show markers of all files. 
Watch what happens when I click on it. Even though I don't have these files open, I can now see inside each one of them. Every single marker is available. And if I double click on one of these markers, it's going to bring that file forward and select that particular marker. You'll notice that they're organized under the actual file or sequence name. So if I double click on my session file, it opens that session file and there is the marker inside there. So all in all, an amazing new uh, collection of features. One last one that I want to show you is the search feature in here. So if I'm searching for my stretched clips, I just start typing, search all the different markers. Remember, we can rename them. They can be subclips, cart timers. They can be cue markers. And, and now it's a full featured area. So the markers area, I think you'll have that panel open a lot in the new Audition CS6.